to welcome you all to the third edition of the Kofi Annan Peace and Security Caps Forum 2024. I'm glad as commandant to have the honor to welcome you to Accra and the KIPTC for this very important event. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Caps Forum is held in memory of the late Busumuru, Mr. Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, who dedicated his life to promoting peace and security globally. The theme for this year's CAPS Forum is Migration and Societal Resilience in a Multipolar World Order, Addressing Conflicts and Building Peace in Africa. The theme was carefully chosen because of the interrelated impacts of migration climate change, and demographic pressures on human security, which are increasingly becoming salient on the global security agenda. Africa, the sound of it, the look of it, the feel of it, beautiful beyond description, the big, bright, gorgeous golden sun that draws like a magnet, arable lands, trees, and magical forests, lakes and rivers, towering mountains, gold, diamonds, oil, men and women whose spirits never die. So why are they leaving, young men and women? Why does the grass seem greener on the other side? Kayaye, both young and old, rushing to the south. Doctors, nurses, teachers, what is this fixation with migration? That leaves us sadly brain drained. Let me commence by quoting the man who inspired both this forum and this center, Kofi Annan. Ever since national frontiers were invented, people have been crossing them, not just to visit foreign countries, but to live and work there. In my own country, during the period of mass migration from Europe from the mid-19th century, more than a quarter of Norway's population left behind poverty and hardship most of them heading for the United States. Their aim was to seek a better life abroad. Today, their descendants continue to work and contribute to American society while taking pride in their Norwegian roots. The CAPS Forum offers a viable platform for critical discussions amongst regional, continental, and international stakeholders of relevance for the region of West Africa and the entire African continent. Such a platform is even more important in times of political divides, of which we see a significant increase on a global scale, also here in the region of beautiful West Africa. Migration is a polarizing subject for many reasons here in Africa, in Europe, and elsewhere. Some will voice their uneasiness with sharing their country with newcomers whose customs are strange to them. Today, we gather to debate a critical topic that has shaped the history and the present of West Africa and the Sahel, migration and societal resilience. For centuries, people have moved across these lands, trading goods and ideas, seeking opportunities. This mobility has enriched the region, contributing to its vibrant cultural mosaic and economic dynamism. Migration also represents the unwavering spirit of people seeking protection, respect, a better life for themselves and their families. It serves as a powerful reminder of our interconnectedness and our destiny. The agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area, whose implementation is currently underway, intends to address some of the main causes of conflict and forced migration by fostering intra-Africa trade and laying the foundation for a more stable and peaceful continent where economic opportunities can flourish. Unfortunately, over the years, those who have benefited from migration over the centuries are those who have led to its criminalization today. 
And I think that is the significance of the meeting. How do we decriminalize migration? It is a cruel irony that even traditional migrant countries that have in the past taken pride in being a migrant society or a nation of migrants are some of those who are no longer sure they want to welcome newcomers. And yet, migrants are development enablers, critical for economic recovery and future growth and sustainable development. Equally critical is the phenomenon of climate change, which is accentuating the threats posed by food and water insecurity, heat stresses and droughts, rising sea levels and increasing salination of arable lands, unpredictable weather patterns and extreme events that include fiercer storms and floods. Available data indicate that 3.5 billion people representing some 40% of the world's population, live in places including Africa that are highly exposed to the impacts of climate change. We're talking about migration in Africa. So I think we cannot only look into from the European perspective of migration, where you always see that you know migration has become a very important aspect. Of course it is for the European countries, but we have, to, if it is an African migration issue, we can't neglect the inter-African migration which is taking place uh, at this time. We have to transform. We have to have a new mindset. We need to have a transformative uh, way of donors assistance. Africans must be at the epicenter of their development of their issues. We have all of the resources left, or maybe let me say 60%, of the resources of the world left on our continent. What are we doing with it? Ghana, we have embarked on a very good system. Our card, the Ghana card, has a lot of features on it. And uh, indeed, it's a standardized uh, card uh, developed by ECOWAS. And if we could all adopt it and register nationals and non-nationals. Eviter les exclusions, toutes sortes. Exclusion politique, exclusion démocratique, exclusion économique, exclusion sociale, exclusion sécuritaire. The history of Africa is based on the culture, on our tradition and our, our religion. And uh, we shouldn't, I think, address anything without taking into account the history of Africa. We do not li lack initiatives, we do not lack programs, and we do not lack research. Where we have ourselves most challenged is in the implementation of these programs and initiatives. It is not only the implementation, it is even our awareness about them. You know, that is because if you are not aware about it, you know, I don't know how you are going to mobilize the, the, the critical elements of society to implement it. When we see you are migrating, properly speaking, You'll be expected to go about your travel documents, um, conform with the travel regulations set by countries. If you require visas, you have to enter by the proper routes, etc. That we call legal or regular migration. If you're living in a what's a democracy and um, you're being told that these are the things that you can get and you can't get, the easier option says, well, then let me go somewhere else where if I have the necessary documentation and the necessary experience and I apply for a job, I have an opportunity to get it and I don't need to be transactional with my body. I don't need to present any evidence of my affiliation to a political party or the other. Ivan Akisoya, the mayor of Freetown now, was elected. And she is someone who has a vision uh, to, to transform Freetown. She came up with a concept known as free town, the tree town, to have one million trees um, growing in free town within a space of 10 years. Illegal uh, mining has also become very, very attractive and also contributing to a lot of population uh, movement in the region because uh, there's a lot of youthful generation who do not really have adequate uh, economic opportunities. So this has become a very attractive 
area where a lot of uh, youth are traveling across the countries to just engage in uh, the lucrative um, illegal mining business. The Western world benefits from people living. Unfortunately, when we are discussing migration and migrants are being demonized, reference is not made to the best hands from the country that have been harvested for free. Many doctors have left. Our best doctors have left. Our best nurses have left. Now, these are not taken into consideration when we are actually demonizing uh, African, African migrants. States in Africa should mainstream climate change mitigation and adaptation strategies into their national development plans as an approach to addressing climate-induced migration within and across the continent. I have the singular honor to declare the 2024 Task Forum officially closed.